A uh, cycle of questions uh, starting from Mr. Balchevsky. What are the challenges uh, for the development of uh, offshore wind, uh, the floating uh, offshore wind? Because you talked about deep waters uh, potential, so we need to have floating uh, offshore wind parks. The abandons in. Μακρά. Θα πρέπει να σκεφτεί κανείς πολύ διαφορετικά από ότι ε, για άλλες περιπτώσεις, διότι τα πλωτά είναι ανεξάρτητα από το βάθος. Μπορεί να υπάρχουν για μια ολόκληρη περιφέρεια. Έτσι λοιπόν, όσο περισσότερο παράγουμε συριακά, τόσο χαμηλότερο είναι το κόστος. Όμως, τα συστήματα πρόσδεσης είναι εξατομικευμένα. Γι' αυτό θεωρούμε ότι είναι καλή ιδέα να έχουμε δύο τορμπίνες στο καθένα. Δύο ανεμογεννήτρες στο καθένα. Για να αξιοποιούμε την εγκατάσταση. Χρησιμοποιούμε διαφορετικά κριτήρια ή προτεραιοποιούμε ή ιεραρχούμε τα κριτήρια πολύ διαφορετικά από ότι αν α, χρησιμοποιήσουμε ε, τα υπεράκτια θαλάσσια συστήματα. Αν κάποιος θέλει να μάθει περισσότερα γι' αυτό, α, σας καλωσορίζω στο, στην τράπεζα, στην στρογγυλή που θα γίνει. Α, από ό,τι καταλαβαίνω, είναι μια εντελώς διαφορετική στρατηγική. Ναι, ναι, γι' αυτό εμείς εστιάζουμε αποκλειστικά σε αυτό, γιατί οι δεξιότητές μας αφορούν σε αυτό. Α, είναι ένα κλάδο στον οποίο είναι ιδιαίτερα απαιτητικό προς τα κεφάλαια ως προς τη Πρέπει λοιπόν να είναι κανείς πάρα πολύ καλά εστιασμένο στο σετ δεξιότητων του. Σας ευχαριστώ πολύ. Ms. Karathanasi, you talked about the uh, next steps uh, forward following the consultation procedure of this uh, uh, draft law. What are the challenges ahead? Let me point out that the consultation uh, pertains to the strategic um, environmental impact study. And uh, I have to say that I keep in mind what was said earlier vis-à-vis -vis the valuation of the national program and that we are uh, always open to discussion. Uh, uh, the HEREMA, the Hellenic Hydrocarbons and Energy Resources Management Company. Now, vis-à-vis -vis the challenges, um, we had uh, previous speakers so quite a few things about challenges, and I too would like to focus on some of these points. The first one being the licensing procedure. We want to move uh, on without further delay delays. Uh, we understand uh, that um, uh, if um, the uh, objectives of NECP uh, need to be uh, fulfilled, we need to uh, be quick uh, about it. But um, although there has been a simplification of procedures, there are still some bottlenecks that we need to tackle. Another point that has been mentioned is the data collection uh, uh, issue centrally uh, in cooperation with IPTO and uh, HEREMA. Uh, we have already started moving towards this direction. We've contacted uh, uh, globally acknowledged uh, companies to get a better grasp of the whole process, the risks, the obstacles uh, that might be involved to be as uh, better prepared as possible. A third point which is valid not only for Greece, uh, that is at an early stage for development of offshore wind, uh, is logistics. But this too, we don't see it as a challenge, rather than uh, rather a, a, an opportunity for Greece. If we want for Greece to become an example uh, for countries to imitate and to be a success story in the story of um, offshore wind, I think that um, uh, this should be quite high in the list of our priorities. All this needs to be implemented uh, uh, by the state, by undertaking specific uh, 
initiatives. I'd also like to mention here that Greece is not starting from scratch right now. We do have infrastructure, we do have ports, we do have um, uh, industries, uh, uh, and all these need to be further strengthened. And all this needs to be adjusted in order to fulfill the national goals. And, and not only national goals, our goal should be to expand regionally. One last point, the acceptance by local community. We're talking about uh, projects uh, that um, are implemented for the first time in Greece. So we, we'd like to see is uh, to have timely information, have transparency in the process and a continuous flow to local communities and local governments in order for everyone to know what's going on and to embrace this effort. Thank you. Now, the issue of uh, informing local communities, etc., has been uh, mentioned in this presentation. It's uh, within the axis of priorities. It is considered to be really important uh, to have a set of, of having uh, adequately informed local communities. Yes at the earliest convenience and in the proper way. Thank you. I uh, don't know if Ms. Colonari is with us still. Yes, of course. You talked about uh, supplies, uh, excuse me, uh, challenges in logistics and the challenges in connection. What are the most important elements that need to be considered here and why? Yes, uh, earlier I mentioned some of them and other speakers have mentioned them as well. I imagine that you've heard uh, that uh, last week the European Commission announced the wind power package. Uh, it's a package uh, that aims at strengthening uh, the sector of wind energy. Many of uh, its provisions will be really positive for offshore wind as well. Now, specifically, this uh, package places emphasis on predictability. Uh, predictability vis-a-vis -vis the risks that might lead to reduction of uh, certainty and security. Licensing uh, issues, connection to the grid, uh, the planning of auctions, human resources. This is one of the biggest achievements in the sector in the past few years at the level of policy and politics. It would be important for countries to try to implement this. As when Europe will try to closely follow up uh, the implementation of this effort in cooperation with uh, the uh, associations of wind energy producers. To be more specific regarding your question, it was mentioned earlier that um, Greece didn't start from scratch vis-a-vis -vis this effort. There is already infrastructure in place. We do have human resources. What is important is that we need to make sure that um, offshore wind um, energy will uh, be the area where all these advantages will be 
used and exploited to secure it. This is my general comment. Thank you very much, Ms. Clonari. I understand that many things need to run uh, at the same time. Therefore, we need a good coordination up to the point where we start seeing uh, the first projects. Yes, precisely. We need to start planning early. We should start today, despite the fact that the goals uh, are for 2030. This is a positive uh, thing that we have already started the procedure. Thank you. Mr. Javieropoulos. A declared goal by the state is for investments in offshore wind to have as high added value as possible and to live as big a footprint in the Greek economy as possible. What would be the conditions to secure that? What we need to make sure is that the floats or will not come to us uh, with tugboats from uh, Italy or Turkey. So it has to do with logistics, yeah. Logistics in Greece are not in a situation that will allow us to move fast. Where we are advanced is cables and the electric the part of it, the, p the power part of it. We need ports, we need... Um, Shipbuilding facilities, shipyards. Uh, we need special vessels. And there is no such thing so far. Even the simplest of all, well, that we claim that we'll get the um, uh, engines. Uh, by sea, we are going to build the floats and place the uh, turbines, etc., on top of them. There is no such thing because there is no appropriate space for that. And when there is a, uh, when there is appropriate uh, space, uh, well, we cannot place such turbines on them. So even in ports where there is space, we need to uh, uh, change uh, some uh, infrastructure. We need to get licenses for that. So it's uh, a whole thing that needs to be able to work in parallel. It calls for investments. And this is not something that we'll have ready tomorrow. And since uh, the issue of logistics is that crucial, already mm, we have prepared and organized an event on that in cooperation with uh, a Norwegian cluster. People from Norway will come and uh, mingle with uh, our own people to see what the, the requirements are. Even what we say about shipyards, OK, we do have shipyards. Do they have the necessary depth in order for the floats to be able to reach the shipyards? And if not, what needs to be done? So everything is quite complicated. It's, uh, it's quite complex, and it's not that simple. Thank you very much, Mr. Kintakis. The state has expressed the belief that um, uh, the uh, potential of uh, the Greek seas uh, might uh, allow Greece to become an exporter of green energy. Do you uh, agree with that? And what does this mean for investors? Uh, when we're first here about exporting uh, power, energy, etc., yeah, it's all very positive. We all know uh, about the geographic location of Greece. Is this an easy task? Unfortunately, no. Do we have uh, the know-how and experience? Thank God, yes. 
What do I mean by that? In previous uh, discussions we had what uh, HEDNO had done, uh, other agencies have done, and what are the uh, perspectives of IPTO? Um, um, all this creates a very pleasant climate for investors who want to uh, come into a country with a present and with a perspective. Uh, things are not easy, but we need to start from somewhere. We need to uh, start from somewhere. So to us, it sounds really, really uh, favorable. Mr. Komodo Reyes, so which are the factors That will allow us uh, to reach 1.9 gigawatts. Uh, to cut a long story short, uh, we need continuity, abidance by the timeline, compliance with that. So we have a whole raft of uh, presidential degrees, ministerial decisions. Uh, it would be good to establish regular uh, auctions. We stick to the supply chain. OK, the supply chain needs a pipeline to invest the many millions needed uh, in order for this infrastructure to be able to host such projects. So it's the chicken and egg uh, situation. Networks, grids, there is a ministerial decision uh, that is under consultation as we speak uh, that holds uh, two gigawatts of space uh, for uh, offshore wind. And we hope that this will also be the case for, for the future. The supply chain, the local supply chain. Uh, we need to see it grow. We cannot have um, such an offshore wind market uh, uh, without the necessary ports that will serve as construction ports, pre-assembly ports so that will be supporting offshore wind projects. This is how it should be in Greece. Obviously, there are shipyards that may play a very important part uh, regarding the construction of uh, uh, segments of uh, floats or uh, regarding the integration of the turbine with the float, etc. Of course, many technical studies need to be conducted regarding the suitability. Uh, what is also important is acceptance by local communities, as Ms. Karathanase put it earlier. We need to start in an organized way to raise awareness vis-a-vis -vis the benefits from offshore wind power. And I think that at this initial stage, this should be done by a central body in order to allow for the dialogue with investors to uh, be launched at a later stage. And another thing I mentioned earlier, whatever we do in the coming three years will play a decisive part in the success of this whole um, effort. Uh, this is the first uh, auction uh, for compensation. The price will uh, be formulated on the basis of what has been done in these three years' time. So we need to cooperate, find an appropriate solution, collect data, evaluate and assess data in a constructive way in order for us as investors to formulate our business cases, uh, uh, doing away with uh, unnecessary risk. The data themselves. are part of uh, an element of visibility to investors, right? Yes, of course. Ms. Togelu, on the basis of um, Ocean Wind's international experience, by comparing with other uh, areas around the world, um, what are the opportunities and challenges um, um, demonstrated uh, by Greece. Um, something that hasn't been uh, mentioned is, uh, well, the main challenge, uh, the availability of the grid. Uh, the grid is an important challenge for all new markets. This is also seen in Greece. 
Mr. Andronas mentioned yesterday that uh, in the Greek grid uh, we have um, committed space that remains unused. And I think that we are talking about 15 gigawatts. This is significant. And uh, regarding uh, the offshore wind, we said that there's going to be a reservation now for two gigawatts. Um, uh, for phase one, conservatively speaking, we could be uh, speaking about five gigawatt capacity, but this is um, restrained. Uh, due to the already reserved space. And in the 10 years plan, we haven't taken into consideration offshore wind. Obviously, Greece as a new market has to face the challenges of every new market. We talked about the supply chain, uh, the ports, the shipyards, etc. This is significant. We're talking about five floating projects uh, as a first phase in Greece. We don't only need one shipyard to serve the capacity. We need to have many ports uh, developed uh, uh, close to the areas where such projects uh, will be built. We don't only need one shipyard, we need more. And the development of such ship shipyards and the fact that we do have a legacy regarding shipyards in Greece is an opportunity for Greece because it will allow it to serve other countries as well, not as assembly ports exclusively, but in many different ways, definitely the supply chain. Uh, other challenges faced by the uh, offshore sector around the world inflation, uh, cost of equity and financing, and the supply chain together. Something specific to Greece, which I consider an opportunity, has to do with um, brain gain. Definitely, right now, there are Greeks abroad who acquire experience in offshore, many of whom would like to come back and to transfer their know-how and experience. I am one such example. Uh, this is really important for Greece. And another challenge for Greece is what uh, we, uh, Mr. Kaviarotis and I, talked about earlier, the territorial waters. We need to remain within the six nautical miles. Uh, so it's quite close to the shore, no matter what. And moreover, we have specific issues with the law vis-a-vis -vis the exclusivity, other issues that need to be further discussed, such as the centralized approach for investigation, the risk that this might entail. That's it. Thank you very much, Ms. Toyelu. I'd like to thank all participants in the panel. So I understand that this is a challenge uh, which is multifactorial. And it uh, even surpasses what we could uh, imagine. But we are talking about significant prospects. Thank you very much.